Welcome to part one of this technical video presentation. My name is Neil Richards and I am a consultant at Orb Data. This video is part one of three videos that demonstrate how to create dynamic job types on IBM Tivoli Workload Scheduler version 8.6. Part one will demonstrate how to create a dynamic pool. Part two will demonstrate how to create a database job definition. Part three will demonstrate how to create a file transfer job definition. But before demonstrating how to create a dynamic pool, I will introduce the component and architecture of the TWS environment used throughout this video. The TWS environment consists of three servers all running 64-bit versions of Linux. The server's host names are tws64.network.com, dynamics64.network.com, smallmac.network.com. All the servers are virtualized within my own VMware workstation environment. tws64.network.com hosts a DB2 9.7 database. TWS64 is the Master Domain Manager, or MDM. It also has a dynamic agent installed. Dynamic64 and SmallMac also have dynamic agents installed. The dynamic agent is a new workstation type provided by TWS 8.6. In 8.6, you can use new workstation types with dynamic capabilities named dynamic agents, pools, and dynamic pools to run jobs with dynamic capabilities. In this video, I will utilize dynamic pools to create and schedule dynamic job types. A dynamic pool is a workstation that groups a set of dynamic agents which is dynamically defined based on the resource requirements that are specified by the user. To create a dynamic job type in this video, I break the process down into three separate tasks. The first task is to define a dynamic pool. The second task is to define a job definition. This task is performed twice. Once for the database job definition, and once for the file transfer job definition. The third and final task is to submit the predefined job to test whether the job in question is successful or not. This task is also performed twice. To begin creating the dynamic job types, I log into the dynamic workload console with my username and password. I move to the portfolio on the left hand side of the screen and expand Tivoli Workload Scheduler. I then expand Schedule Environment design and then click on create workstations. I accept the default engine name and click on the create workstation button. The workstations property screen is displayed and the general information in the name text box I enter the name example pool. I move down to the workstation type selection box and select dynamic pool. The operating system selection box I leave as Unix. Next, I select the button next to the workload broker text box. This launches the find workstation instance screen. Click on the search button.
The dynamic workload broker for my environment is displayed on screen. In my environment, the dynamic workload broker has a name of TWS64 underscore DWB. I click on the OK button to continue. The workload broker text box is now populated with the workload broker name of TWS64 underscore DWB. I now click on the Edit Requirements button to provide some resource requirements for my dynamic pool. Under the Operating System section, I select the Linux checkbox. Then under CPU Utilization, I enter a value of 50 in the text box. I ignore both logical resources and ordered workstations. Finally, under Optimization, I select the CPU Utilization radio button and click on OK. On the Workstation Properties page, I click the Save button to create my dynamic pool, example pool, in the database. The following message is displayed on screen. The following workstation definition was added, example pool. Click on OK to continue. Example pool has now been created in the database. However, example pool does not exist in the current production plan. To verify this, I go to the portfolio and expand monitor. And then I click on monitor workstations. I click on all workstations in plan distributed. On the Choose Engine screen, it is important to note that under the section labelled Select an Engine, the default engine is listed. In this case, Discovered TWS64 Distributed. There is a checkbox labelled Remember for Current Session. Selecting this checkbox will prevent the engine selection being asked again for this session. For this video, I do not select the checkbox and I accept the default engine name by clicking the OK button. This table displays all the workstations in the current plan. The dynamic pool example pool is not present. To add example pool into the plan, I bring up a terminal session and execute the command jnextplan-4000. The command jnextplan-4000 recreates and distributes the current plan without extending it into the next production day. If I now click on the refresh button, the example pool will be displayed. There it is with a workstation name of example pool, a type of dynamic pool, and an agent running status of yes. However, there is a problem. In this table, the limit value of example pool is set to zero. Limit is a workstation numeric property controlling the maximum number of concurrent jobs that the workstation can execute. With a value of zero, example pool will be unable to execute any jobs. So this value needs to be increased.
To increase the limit value, simply click on the limit value in the example pool row. In this case, zero. Under the section marked new limit, enter a value of 10 and click OK. The limit value of example pool is now set to 10. This will enable the workstation to run a maximum of 10 concurrent jobs. With the dynamic pool created and with the workstation limit increased to 10, everything is in place to utilize the dynamic pool with a dynamic job type. This concludes part one of how to create dynamic job types on IBM Tivoli Workload Scheduler version 8.6. Part two will use the dynamic pool defined in this video to demonstrate how to create a database job definition. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions or queries contact me via my email address on screen of Neil dot richards at orb hyphen data dot com